the school, man, you don't want to go. You ask your mom, please, but she still says no. You miss two classes and no homework. But your teacher preaches class like you're some kind of jerk. You gotta fight for your right to party. Your pops caught you smoking and he says, no way. Hypocrite smokes two packs a day Man living at home is such a drag Now your mom threw away your best porno mag You gotta fight for your right to party You gotta fight for your right to party Don't step out of this house if that's the clothes you're gonna wear I'll kick you out of this home if you don't cut your hair Your mom busted in said what's that noise Oh, mom, you're just jealous, it's the Beastie Boys You gotta fight for your right to party You gotta fight for your right to party You gotta fight for your right to party As many of you know, Adam Yellow of the Beastie Boys passed away last Friday. You know, sad, sad time in music for a lot of hip-hop fans and music fans alike. You know, I was 11 years old, and I grew up in Flint, Michigan, and, you know, I first found their music. I was, uh, I used to get driven to school by a teenager that worked for my dad. He was a dropout, and... You know, I was just singing some country song, and he, like, turns to me, and he's like, Bro, that sucks. And he pops in Paul's Boutique on cassette. And every time I got drove to school, that's what we'd be playing is Paul's Boutique. I even got in trouble one time, because I was singing the lyrics for 59 Christie Street, and I <laughs> had to spend a couple days in detention for the lyrics. Uh, uh, one year in uh, high school, uh, or a little bit before high school, probably around 7th grade, I was walking home and I found a busted CD on the sidewalk. Ironically, it happened to be ill communication. It was stretched to hell, but a few tracks still played, and that included Sure Shot. And Sure Shot's one of my favorite off that album. That, that song will stand the test of time for years. Like, in the very few days that I had it, I would sneak in and play in the basement because of the swearing in it. You know, I was 12 years old, and my mom was all about very protective over that type of stuff. You know, all the kids in middle school were into the hip-hop and Nelly and Outkast. But I shunned that style of hip-hop. You know, it just didn't have the same edge. You know, sadly my mom found the CD and she threw it away. I didn't really listen to Beastie Boys for a while until, like, the end of high school. My mom was always into country music. And my dad always had ACDC playing. But eventually, I... About 17 years old, I picked up License Ill, Paul's Boutique, and the anthology Sounds of Science. And ever since then, I've never looked back. They've been a great influence on my life. Uh, just very inspirational. You know, they always keep me positive in mind. And right now, I'm going to play a track. This I next should have my dear friend, Insane Poetry on the and line after that. So stay tuned. Brass monkey, the funky monkey. Brass monkey junkie, the foggy monkey. Brass monkey, the foggy monkey. 
Brass monkey junkie, the funky monkey Cooling by the lockers, getting kind of funky Me and the crew were drinking brass monkey This girl walked by, she gave me the eye I reached in the locker and grabbed the Spanish fly I put it with the monkey, mixed it in the cup Went over to the girl, yo baby, what's up? I offered her a sip, the girl she gave me lip It did begin the stuff for it and now she's on my tip Brass monkey, the funky monkey Brass monkey junkie, the funky monkey, yes! I totally forgot this is an all-ages show I saw this young lady, she's clearly in high school What's your name, sweetheart? Jen, are you uh, any? Uh, uh, have you been offended by anything I've been doing tonight? No. You have not been fucking offended tonight. No. Is this your dad? What's your name, sir? Bill. Bill, I'm so fucking glad you brought your daughter to the show. <laughs> nice work, Bill. Thank you, sir. You got a dry martini, thinking you're cool. I'll take your place at the bar and smack you off your stool. Monkey and party and reeling and rocking Deaf girls, all y'all jockin' I drink it, I think it, surprise me I love rap, whoa, slow down Alright, what was that, let's see Oh man, that's strong, give me something to go with that I can't do a shot, I'm performing There's, there's, there's teenage girls in the audience That'd be irresponsible Oh, is that Sprite? How about maybe a little simple syrup, you know what I'm saying? Sweeten it up a little bit, you know what I mean? There we go, okay, how about some orange juice? Maybe a little juice in there. Sprite, orange juice, uh, I believe there's some vodka in there and a little simple syrup. Mix that puppy up. All right, that's pretty good. Let's see what this is. Every time I drink that, I hear someone say cheese. Oh, that's fucking good. All right, say this back here. Do not roofie this drink. You, ma'am, you can roofie it, but don't let them do it. I got a dry martini thinking you're cool. I took his place at the bar and smacked him off the stool. Monkey and party and a reeling and a rock and sing it. Death, girls, all y'all jockin'. I drink it, I think it, I see it, I be it. I love Brass Monkey, but I won't give George W.B. it. We got the bottle, you got the cup. Come on, everybody, let's get fun. Brass Monkey, the funky monkey. Brass Monkey Junkie, the funky monkey. Brass Monkey, the funky monkey. Brass Monkey Junkie, the funky monkey. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I like to do the Beastie Boys Bentley. I only do this when I've had a cocktail like that. That was great. What's the name of that bartender? Someone holler it out. Whatever his name is. Thank you, sir. A big round of applause for our bartenders here at 930 Club. All right, this is the Beastie Boys medley. It's very hard because I am quite intoxicated. You guys ready? All right, I think I got it. I don't know if I want to know about that, sir. Intergalactic planetary Planetary, intergalactic So what you, what you, what you want So what you, what you, what you want Check, 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 check it out What, what, what's it all about What, 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 we'll work it out Let's turn this motherfucking party out No sleep till Brooklyn Three MCs and one DJ We be getting down with no delay Next master mic, what you gotta say God damn that DJ made my day Brass monkey, the funky monkey Oh, 
Alrighty, we got Insane Poetry on the line to discuss on how the Beastie Boys influenced hip hop and his music. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, how did the Beastie Boys influence your music career, man? How influential are oh, they? Man. Oh, well, first of all, uh, I have to give a special shout out to uh, the whole Beastie Boy uh, movement and all that stuff and uh, MCA uh, condolences to the family and everything. As far as the Beastie Boys, they were they were Def Jam. They were Def Jam. They were the ones that brought LL to the forefront. You know, if it wasn't for the Beastie Boys, LL Cool J wouldn't have existed. And he was probably one of my favorite artists at that time during that era. And uh, Beastie Boys, really, a lot of their, you know, you would think of their first album, Life Sister L, was uh, you know just real drunk and madness, which was cool because if you like drunk and madness, it was that was good for that. But when they came out with the second album, Paul's Boutique, and they recorded the record with the Dust Brothers, the Dust Brothers who produced that record, I mean, they, they innovated sampling in hip-hop, to be honest with you. So, you know, uh, my recollection of Beastie Boys is legendary. You know, they're iconic. It's like Jam Master, J Run, DMC, and all that stuff like that. You know, it's just an iconic group, no matter how you look at it, a lot of, uh, a lot of, what artists are doing today have been spawned from artists like Adam Yacht, MCA, you know, Beastie Boys, and, you know, even Red Man redid something, redid a few of their songs and stuff like that. A lot of people used uh, Paul Revere as the instrumental and flip shit, so, you know, Beastie Boys is very iconic in hip-hop. Oh, I agree, man, and it's not even just hip-hop, and there's, like, rock and roll, there's, like, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Well, no, yeah, no question, I mean, all, you know, and a lot of different they, they they were definitely you know uh, uh, from what I I don't know if I'm correct but a punk band at the beginning and uh, you know so they're very eclectic you know they had they had the intangibles to do that's why you could have a, a, a um, the next album where they had the so what you want and all that and oh yeah check your head check your head that's, that's what, yeah they did more of the live instrumentation in their shit, you know, and it was just like, you could tell the Beastie Boys were just on a different page than most so-called hip-hop artists back then, you know, it was basically about, but you know, even, even them to be that breakthrough group, there was that breakthrough group that, you know, that, that, that was able to get fans in all kind of genres, I mean, I mean, I knew brothers, you know, black people who bought beasties, I knew, you know, whites and every other nationality who bought the beasties, you know, it was really dope, really dope, I mean, it was a sad day in hip-hop to, for Adam to, to pass away, but I think there was something they knew was going to, going to happen, because I think he was diagnosed in 2008 or something, like that, 2009, and um, I think they knew it was eventually going to go down, it's kind of weird, because I was used to seeing the beastie boys, but, uh, you know, and then I saw them on uh, all of all three of them on some 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 award show, and Adam looked really like like you knew something was not right. So yeah, that's that's my take for insane poetry, bro. It's, you know, they were a major part of my my uh, my love for hip hop, straight up. Oh, uh, that was my first love for hip hop too. Uh, Paul's Boutique, man, all the way. I, 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 I I got that on vinyl. And uh, what's your favorite all-time Beastie Boys song of all time, if you can name one or a couple or a few? I mean, I mean, I don't even think I can name one because I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, No Sleep to Brooklyn was dope, but I ain't even from Brooklyn. I'm from the West Coast. Um, you know, you got you know Paul Revere. I mean. <sighs> I mean, so what you want, I mean, you, I could just go on and on, uh, um, they just, they just was, they was innovative, bro, and they, they, they were very experimental, they took chances where other people, you know, few people could do that and pull it off, what the Beastie Boys did, I, I really don't have a favorite song, I, I, I would be lying if I had just one song from the Beasties that would stand out to me, because it was probably every album they put out, I had a favorite song on it. Hell yeah, man. Uh, we got Insane Poetry giving a shout out to the BC Boys. Hey, thank you, bro. I appreciate you calling in and, you know. No doubt, no doubt. No doubt. Anytime, anytime, man. Much love. Shout out to all the, the BC Boys supporters that uh, support the radio station. 
And uh, be sure to catch, you know, I know this is Adam Young and the MCA shout out. I will be back on in another five days on the 17th, you know, to give you some of that insane poetry, uh, news, and all that stuff like that. But this, this show is for uh, the, the Beastie Boys and Adam Young. And uh, much love and condolences to his family, man. It's, like I say, you know, you guys call in and, and give your opinions and, and say what you have to say. But uh, much love anyway, brother. You take it easy, too. Yeah, you take it easy, bro. Keep grinding, man. Keep pushing out hip hop for London. Yep. All right, that was insane poetry. You know, first single dropped in 1988. You know, big influence in the Wicked Underground scene. Now here's a little story I got to tell about two bad brothers you know so well. It started way back in history with that killer sinister and his boy F E N I X Z. Pin had a little horsey name called Revere Just me and my horsey in a quart of beer Riding across the land, kicking up sand Sheriff Fossey's on my tail cause I killed a man One lonely psycho killer I be All up by myself without nobody The sun is beating down on my baseball hat The air is getting hot, the beer is getting flat Looking for a girl, I ran into a guy His name is DJ Phoenix, I said howdy, he said hi He told a little story that sounded well rehearsed Four days on the run and that he's dying of thirst The fruit was in my hand and he was on my tip His voice was hoarse, his throat was dry, he asked me for a sip He said, can I get some? I said, you can't get none Had a chance to run, he pulled out his shotgun Quick on the draw, I thought I'd be dead He put the gun to my head and this is what he said now, my name is DJ Phoenix, got a license to kill I think you know what time it is, it's time to get ill Now what do we have here? A killer in his beer I'm fun to say, you understand, I make myself clear. We stepped into the wind, he had a gun, I had a grin. You think the story's over, but it's ready to begin. Now I got the gun and you got the brew You got two choices of what you can do It's not a tough decision as you can see I can blow you away or you can ride with me I said I'll ride with you if you can get me to the border The sheriff's after me for what I did to his daughter I fucked her like this, I fucked her like that I fucked her with a wiffle ball bat So I'm on the run, the cops got my gun And right about now it's time to have some fun The killer sinister, that is my name and I know the fly spot where they got the champagne we rode for six hours then we hit the spot the beat was a bumping and the girlies was hot this dude was staring like he knows who we are we took an empty spot next to him at the bar phoenix said yo sin you know this bitch i said hell nah but i know he did phoenix said get ready cause this ain't funny my name's dj phoenix i'm about to get money he pulled out the jammy and aimed it at the sky he yelled stick him up and let two hands win up and people hit the Floor. He wasted two kids that ran for the door well, I'm Phoenix and I get respect Your cash and your jewelry is what I expect DJ Phoenix was with it and he's my ace So I stabbed the piano player and I kicked him in the face Piano player's out, the music stopped This dude had beef and he got dropped Phoenix grabbed the money, sinister snatched the gold We grabbed our fucking girlies in a beer that's cold All right, we have Draco, the owner of TTS Radio, Kitchen Sink Radio. We play everything under the kitchen sink on the line to discuss how the BC Boys influenced his life. What's up, bro? Uh, not much, man. I mean, where can I really start with how the BC Boys influenced my life? I mean, shit, I, I must have been fucked probably around eight when I heard the BC Boys first. Because I remember... Uh, I think it was Hello Nasty was out. That song Intergalactic. And uh, also, like, Mr. L, you know, Brass Monkey and shit. You know, all the kids in school would play that song. And, you know, everybody loved that fucking song. I loved that song. It got stuck in my head through most of my childhood. So, 
you know, growing up in a Jewish family, you know, the Beastie Boys were like idols, you know, like they were people you aspired to look up to, you know. It's just one of those groups that you, you know, when you grow up in that situation that you really just grow to adore, you know. So, when my brother was bar mitzvah, I don't know if you're familiar with that whole, you know, thing, but when, you know, you're just like the coming of age thing when you're 13. Yeah. So, me and my brother fought over um, who would walk out to Intergalactic at his party. Because there was, like, there's this whole, like, uh, lighting candles at a cake, you know. Because it's, you know, 13 candles for 13 members of the family and shit because they're 13, you know. So, it was really cool, man. I mean, me and my brother fought about it, and I won, of course. <laughs> it was pretty funny. But, uh, you know, I just, I really love the work that they did as, you know, a unit and just everything that they stood for has, you know, depth and meaning, you know. They, they were just a fun bunch of people, really. You know, you could tell that they had fun with their work. And that, that really resonated with me when I started rapping and doing my shit, you know. So, you know. Yeah, so... I just, I think it's just a wonderful, it's a wonderful footnote to anybody who wants to get started, whether you're white, black, Asian, or other colors. I mean, it's it's a great foundation to look at as far as hip-hop goes, you know? For sure, for sure. Uh, do you have a favorite Beastie Boy? <laughs> Not to single anybody out, do you have a favorite one, though? <laughs> Man, I mean, jeez. Oh, um, if I really had to put my finger on it, I'd say Intergalactic was one of my favorites because it was just so different than everything else that they did, you know? It was just so obscure, and I thought that it was really cool how they put that all together. I mean, you know, when I was about 14 to 15, I was in the punk rock scene, like, really hardcore, so I was about 19. So, you know, going to basement shows and seeing a lot of punk rock concerts, these people were really important to me, you know? And, you know, it's just, it's, it's one of those bands that sticks with you as you get older, you know? There's no outgrowing them, you know? So, I think, I think everything that the Beastie Boys have done has importance to it, you know? Because it's, it's all different, you know? Yeah, they've influenced so many different people. I mean, uh, Cancer Bats covered Sabotage. Uh, Red Chili Peppers did a tribute show for them a few few days ago. Uh, who else? Uh, just it, all the hip hop community, including Eminem, Yellow Wub, Jay Z gave a shout out. Yeah. A bunch of people, man. It's crazy. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, it was what I found was really cool is when I was watching um, that uh, what is it, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and the Beastie Boys shouted out Bad Brains. Not a lot of people know who Bad Brains are, but they were one of the first um, all-black punk rock bands from Washington, D.C. And, I mean, I saw Bad Brains the other day at the truck. They were dope, man. Like, the ones, they're, like, old as shit now. Like, they're, they're at least, you know, past their 50s, you know? And they're making a whole group of people. Like, that place, I was very glad I was on the balcony. When I looked down over the balcony, that whole fucking place was a mosh pit, literally. Circle mosh all around, dude. I would have been fucked up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, the BC... The BC Boys got their initials from Bad Brains, BB. That's it's their homage to the Bad Brains. That's where they got their initials from. Yeah, and I mean, Bad Brains, you know, this isn't about, you know, I, I could go on about Bad Brains for days, but the BC Boys and Bad Brains and all of that whole chunk of music is really a great tribute to music in general. I mean, it's definitely a testament to longevity. You know, as far as music goes, and if you enjoy what you're doing and you love what you're doing and you really want to keep creating something different, I mean, it's just, it's a way of, but these people have made a way of life for people, and I think that's important. That's, that's more than anything, you know, that they can cross over so many different genres and really show people that hip-hop was more than just, you know, break beats and rapping over a couple of songs, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
a self and sabotage sabotages his own chaotic punk rock anthem, you know. <laughs> oh, for sure. And I mean, this is the way that they set it up. I mean, it was so simplistic, but it was so awesome too, you know. And I mean, just the the three chord way of doing punk rock is so purest and dope, I and mean, it's just. It's really cool that they could do that and still stay true to hip hop with it at the same time, you know? Yep. Uh, I, I like mean, that's, that's not easy to do, you know? I mean, if the DC Boys never did that, you know, bands like the Transplants wouldn't be, you know, able to do what they do. A lot of these people, you know, mixing rock and roll and rap would not be able to do what they did. I mean, the DC Boys literally paved the way for so many people's favorite bands to do what they've done, you know? So, I mean, if anything, that much is what they should be remembered for is really putting in the effort and stick, and just sticking with it, you know? Uh, I, li I like how they never, they, they didn't have never sold out. They've been, like... <laughs> every okay. album's different, you know? Every album, they just did whatever they wanted, you know? And that's what's awesome... Yeah, and I mean, it's just, I just find it amazing, and I, I, I want to be that that age and still making music, you know? For These sure. These boys made it very clear that they could still do what they do and, you know, grow older and grow more mature and actually give back to the causes that they believe in, you know? Take, you know, political stances and actually, you know follow through with it instead of just holding a couple of signs, you know? I mean, that's important, you know? I mean, they really set a precedent for people to, you know, act instead of just talking, you know? Yeah, here, here's a question. Did this ever happen to you? Like, uh, you very first listen to License Ill, and then you grab Paul's Boutique, and you're just like, what the fuck is this? Like, it kind of throws you yeah. off a little bit. But then it's like, whoa, it it grows on you and then it becomes like your all time favorite album like Paul's Boutique. You know what I mean? How license it was more party and then when you when you never listen to Paul's Boutique and you go to it, you're just like, I don't know if I like this record but then it just grows on you and becomes like the best record ever, you know what I mean? Did that ever happen to you? Same same you know, thing. It really depends on uh, what angle you go with, you know what I mean? The Beastie Boys, I go song by song personally. I never looked at their albums as, you know, I think their songs transcended their album personally, like, because every song was so different, you know? Yeah, I mean, Paul, I, I, I had Paul's Boutique on cassette, and I, as, as I said, I, 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 it sucked me in, and I, like, I listened to License Ill, and it's like, I don't know which one's better, you know? But then it turned out Paul's Boutique is the more phenomenal one, you know? Oh, yeah. And I mean, <laughs> what, I, what I can really say is that I think everything that they've done is just, you know, it, it's cool. You know, everything that they did was cool in his generation every time, you know? They were never uncool with anything that they put out, you know? Everything that they ever put out was well-received. And, you know, there's something to say about that, that, you know, just it proves that what they were doing was important, you know? What they've done is important, you know? For sure. Uh, you got any all-time favorite tracks? The, your top five? <laughs> um, Fight for Your Right to Party, uh, Brass Monkey, uh, Intergalactic. Ah, shit. There's so many good Beastie Boys tracks. It's fucking crazy, man. Like, oh, uh, you, even off their new album, I don't know if you heard uh, Hot Sauce Committee Part 2 yet, but dude, the track Say It, it's just so, like, energetic. Like, the hook. <laughs> This makes you want to yeah, I gotta get up on some new Beastie Boys, man. Like, for a while there, I got lost in a lot of other music. I'm not even gonna lie, but like... Oh, I listen to a lot of variety myself, so I feel you on that one. Yeah, I mean, there's so much music out there. It's fucking crazy, bro, you know? So it's just like, yeah. Oh, it's Paul Revere. How the fuck did I forget Paul Revere? <laughs> Favorite line. That's a dope song. And No Sleep Till Brooklyn. There we go. There's five for you. <laughs> Fuck just, yeah. Just for you, five. <laughs> uh, my favorite, favorite line. It's the most simplest line to any lyric, but it's just so cool MCA did it. 
roses are red, the, the sky is blue, I got my barrel at your neck, so what the fuck are you going to do? Like, that was off a three-minute rule on Paul's Boutique. That line, I'll never forget that line. It's just how he worded it. It's just epic, you know? <laughs> yeah, dude. And I mean, I just, as I said, I think that, you know, everything that they've done has been cool, you know? Like, I, I don't think that anything that, they, that they've ever made was, like, whack, you know? Honestly. Like, I can't ever listen to a Beastie Boys track and be like, turn this fucking song off, you know? Yeah, I've never you know had that. I've never there's had some, that happen. You know, artists. <laughs> I mean, there's some artists where, you know, I love, like, three quarters of the catalog, and then, you know, they have, you know, three or four bad songs that just, like, you know, turn this shit off now, you know? But I never had that with the Beastie Boys, and I think that that's rare, you know? Definitely. Any last words you'd like to say about the Beastie Boys and Adam Yow before we, uh, close down this awesome dedication? I mean, the Beastie Boys will forever be part of my music history for life. I mean, I got Paul's predict on vinyl. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just, I really hope that the Beastie Boys keep on creating, you know, even when losing Adam, it's just... Yeah, it's I like... I know it's a huge loss and it's fucked up and everything, but... I really do hope that they keep on creating and they keep on, you know, bringing a new generation to hip hop, you know? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't even know what they're going to do. If I think they might. Maybe Mike D and uh, Ad Rock will release some soul albums, but we'll see what happens. I mean, I would like to hear some new music, but as I said, when you lose someone that's. It's like a family, you know? You're losing a family member out of your band, and it's just not the same. It's, yeah. It doesn't. I mean, you know, it's not like ACDC where you can get new vocalists. It's totally different. This is like something else, you know. Well, I mean, when you look at hip hop and you look at some people's voices and the way that they do things, I mean, Adam will always have a certain way he does things, certain talents that other rappers will never have, you know. So I mean, it's like. You know, it'd be, it's like when Jam Master J was killed, you know? You can never replace Jam Master J, you know? There'll never be another Tupac. There'll never be, you know... Biggie Smalls. Another fucking Biggie Smalls. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you can't replace those voices with new voices and say, hey, can you do this, you know, that way that that guy did it, please, you know? Because that's just, it's not a character, and it wouldn't be real, you know? Yep, I agree with you 100%. Yeah, man, I mean, I really do hope that the DC boys keep on creating, even without Adam, and it's, you know, at least producing or, you know, making, you know, collaborations or something, you know, because that, that's really important that they keep making stuff, you know? At least I think so. Oh, I agree with you. I'm, I'm down with you 100%, bro. Yeah, man, I mean, I'm going to let you do your thing. And, uh, you know, thanks again for doing all these interviews and, you know, interviewing man. me about the Beastie Boys and all that shit. Cause dude, cool thank you, man. I thank you for having this whole setup, dude. I mean, fuck, I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't run it. How I ran into you is because Bloodshot wanted a track on Devil's Night, and I was like, who's this guy? I guess I'll contact him because he told me about you, and I'm glad that happened. If I would never... if I didn't seek Bloodshot out for a track. Uh, I would never ran into you. So it's kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's funny that way. You know how people sort of come together. I mean, me and Bloody have known each other for a long minute, you know. It's like, and Bloodshot will always be one of the people that, like, if anybody ever comes to me with anything, like, as you were saying, there's a lot of shit in the underground that happens, but, like, Bloody is just one of those people where I will tell people if they tell me anything negative, I would just say, shut the fuck up, shut your fucking mouth, because I don't want to fucking hear it, type of people, you know? Because Bloody is one of those people who's always been there for me and always has been good to me, so, you know, I'll go on the record with that. <laughs> I'm cool with saying that, you know? One shot is one of those people that I will go to bat for any time, you know? For sure, for sure. And so... Hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So I'm going to finish it off with one track from this Mick Boogie mixtape. As I said, it was a free mixtape that he released on his website on around April. So it was before, before Adam passed away. and uh, He even made t-shirts, Grand Royal t-shirts, with the mixtape to actually donate towards funding uh, cancer and everything for Adam Yao. And uh, MC Chris teamed up with... Kevin Smith, you know, clerks, and, you know, they got their uh, cancer research thing going on for donating, and they even gave a shot to MCA, so, I mean, it's, still, it's like, affecting everybody. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, man. So, let's uh, play yeah. past, past the Mic Park 2 off, the, um, off this free mixtape, as I say, you can find it on his official website, uh, just type in Mick Boogie. Uh, Grand Royal mixtape and it's on his official website or go on his Facebook he has a link on his Facebook too and it was approved by the Beastie Boys and uh, any last words Draco about the Beastie Boys last shout out man all I can really say is you know rest in peace Adam Yelp aka MCA you definitely brought so much wonderful music to the world and such wonderful philanthropy as well and what you've done as a person will never be transcended by anybody I don't give a fuck if it's Bono or you know who the fuck else but you have done a great body of work and I salute you as an artist as a person as a fucking human being you were amazing so rest in peace you know yep I agree with that yeah. For sure, man. And, uh, For sure. I'm gonna let you go, and uh, thank you again. Yeah. For the chat. Fuck yeah, dude. BC Boys, long live the BC Boys. Fight for your right to party. No sleep till Brooklyn. Fucking yeah, just keep fucking keep the music alive for Everything. sure for life. <laughs> Everything about the BC Boys is fucking gold. <laughs> Let's just put it there, <laughs> right there. <laughs> Uh, All right. You take care, buddy. Yeah, you take care, too, man. All right, dude. All right, man. And next, we should have Intrinsic on the line.
right, we have Intrinsic on the line. And, you know, big influence in the underground. You know, Underground Hustling is on volume 40 already, being hosted by Ron Jeremy. Uh, Chris Calgo of Tech Nine Strange Music is hosted volume 23. And, you know, it's becoming a big, huge monster. And here's what Intrinsic has to say on how the BC Boys influence as an MC. Hey, what up, man? You're on the air. You ready for this? Yo, yo, what's going on? Yeah, how did the BC Boys influence your music career, bro? Dude, I mean, you know, I feel like I've been a fan of the BC Boys, not like hardcore, hardcore fan, but all in all, they just kind of paved the way, you know, for white Jewish people in hip-hop. I mean, they created, they were, you know, part of Def Jam from day one, and you know what I mean, influenced uh, tons of, you know, tons of the sound of hip-hop, you know, in general. And uh, the main thing was their, you know, social consciousness and their, their live performance was, was off the hook, you know what I'm saying? But as far as, like, I don't think my sound was really all that influenced by them, but at the same time, they influenced hip-hop from the beginning. So somewhere, you know, it, it was probably influenced um, along the along the road, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, Paul's Boutique definitely is a big influence. Everybody from Eminem to uh, Tribe Called Quest, have, even on Madonna it's, uh, tweeted about it. So, I mean, it's pretty, it's impacted a lot of people in the music world, you know? Yeah, the main thing is everyone thinks I look just like that dude. So, I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. Hopefully, uh, you know, people are hitting me up to be stars in a movie or something. I don't know. But, uh, but, I mean, it's it's too bad, you know? It's just, like, the dude is way too young. I, I luckily saw the Beastie Boys perform, but, you know, so many people never got to saw, see them. And if, if they did come out again, it would have it would have attracted a whole new um, age, you know, a whole new demographic of fans because the younger kids, you know, they heard of the Beastie Boys, but they didn't really know what it was all about. And, you know, with MTV pretty much gone and all you know that, i mean bc boys were you saw them on mtv all the time and the cool thing about it is no one ever said they were sellouts or anything like that because they were, they've been doing it for so long you know what i'm saying it's not like they ever did sell out that's just they were they were like part of hip-hop from day one so they were just doing their thing and, and it is unfortunate that uh you know the kids now won't really get to see what what the BCs were all about. Yeah, man, like, uh, as I, the, each album had its own different type of music going on, you know, uh, Ill Communication is more experimental and more jazzy sounding, and, and it, each yeah. record is different, and it's so, and your own unique. They never really changed it up for anybody, they just kept doing their own style, you know? Yeah, and what a lot of people don't know is they, you know, were good musicians as well. I mean, I, when, when I saw them live, they were jamming out, you know what I'm saying, on the, the percussion and the drums and the guitars and stuff. So, I mean, they, I, they were a punk band before anything. So, you know, and I, I was in a punk band before anything. And a lot of, rap, at least white rappers now, you know, started out in metal or punk bands. So, I mean, they just kind of made it easy for, for people like us to just transition to hip hop, so it, it, it's it's crazy the the impact that they have on the music and like the, just the business in general and the the way hip hop turned out in the year 2012. You know they they helped shape and mold all that. For sure, for sure. Uh, thanks a lot for tuning in, man. I appreciate you uh, being on the line, and you know. It's pretty awesome. Uh, congrats on Underground Hustling Volume 40, by the way. It's looking pretty huge. Yeah, it's always just, you know, it's always a fun time doing all that. So just keep keep supporting, man, and, and, uh, and people will keep making the music. Hell yeah, bro. Take it easy, man. I'll uh, hit you up sometime, man, for an interview for sure, bro. Good deal, man. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, man. All right. Peace, Chad. Red. And...
That was Intrinsic, under on Hustlin. I was already on volume four. As I mentioned, Ron Jeremy will be hosting that volume. He's had a potluck of suburban noise, uh, necro of psychological records. He's become like a huge monster. And my final uh, words for Adam Yao, the BC Boys, it's, you know, it's very sad. I will always continue to keep listening to them and showing other people the music, even people who don't like hip-hop tend to like the BC Boys. They're just like, they, it's like a gateway to hip-hop. That's that's how I feel about it, you know, everybody's getting sucked into it. It's a big intro. And, I mean, just, I'm glad that Adam Yao got to see his own group being inducted into the Hall of Fame, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I mean, I'm glad he got to see that. You know, Chuck D, a public enemy, he made a statement, and he said, Last night I took a 14-hour flight to Sydney, Australia from L.A., embarking on P.E.'s 80th tour in 25 years. I just landed to 65 texts with the news. Adam and the boys put us on our first tour 25 years and 79 tours ago. They were essential to our beginning, middle, and today. Adam especially was unbelievable in our support from till then till now even allowing me to induct him to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I consider myself a strong man, and my father says, be prepared to lose many in your 50, post-50th past life. Still, I'm a little bit teary-eyed leaving this plane. And Daniel Jordan Real Life Production says, The BCs are like the three musketeers, one for all. Losing one is like losing all, and losing one is like losing a family member. I look back at my adults, and they were always there, Always stimulate my young brain with unique sounds and visuals. Losing them is similar to losing your adolescence. An artist getting shot is a much different feeling to a fan than artists starting to die because they are getting older. And that is my dedication to Adam Yao of the BC Boys. Uh, Jay Reno will be on the line shortly for his exclusive interview. So let's kick it off with the track from him and we'll dive right in. Thanks for everybody tuning in. I appreciate it 100%. Uh, TKS Radio, we play everything under the kitchen sink.
All right, we have Jay Reno on the line. Yo. Yeah, yeah, what's going on, man? What up, man? So, let's kick this off first things first. You know, your early life in Windsor, Canada, how did it influence your career today and who you are as a person? Can you give us a little bit of background on who you are? How did my, how did my city influence me as a person? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, yeah, that's a good question. Um, man. But it's like, honestly, like with this unemployment capital of Canada, you know what I mean? Yeah. And there was uh, auto factories and shit, and they closed left, right, and center. Just like Flint, Michigan. Yeah. Got a couple, though, right? But then we border city Detroit. So, like, Canada grew up watching CBC and shit, and I grew up watching Fox Detroit. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like... I don't know. Like, it definitely influenced me as a person who I am today, you know? It's, uh, it's a dark area. It's a rough fucking shitty situation for most people <laughs> who live around here, you know what I mean? Yeah, I've never been there, but, I mean, I grew up in Flint, so I know how it goes sometimes. Some messed up shit happens, you know? Yeah, I mean, people come to this city, bro, and they, they uh, it's like, to them, it's like South Detroit. Like, it don't really look much different than Detroit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if, if that river wasn't there, it'd just be another fucking neighborhood. It just has different laws. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, what age did you start exploring hip-hop, and what inspired you to venture to the dark side? You know, the wicked shit, the horror. I mean, what influenced you to go down that path? Uh, you know what, man? I, I think, uh... When I really, really, really got into hip hop, I heard a song my my boy showed me in grade school. It was a KRS One song, and I just I I don't know. It just clicked right there. Like I just I really liked the way the shit sounded, man. You know what I mean? And I was a kid, and eventually, like, you know, I lived in Windsor, so being a kid, it's like uh, my my older cousin had tapes from Detroit. Like a lot of mugs around here, a lot of shit from Detroit. And one of them just so happened to be ICP. And that's how I was introduced kind of to, like, you know, that kind of fucking rap. You know what I mean? Oh, and yeah, man. That was, I couldn't even tell you the year. It was a long-ass time ago, but, like, I didn't stop there. Like, I started, you know, digging deeper into it, especially when I got my hand on a computer. Like, I found all types of shit when I was a kid. Like, I was, I, <laughs> I found Eshaan. And not us, man, I used to fucking bump to all that shit I had when I was I was young as hell, man. What did, what age what age if you remember, did you first start writing down lyrics with a pen and pad paper and just start rhyming, man? Man, I think I was twelve. Well I maybe yeah, about twelve years old, man. I mean me and me and some buddies was uh but just freestyle, we had tapes, man, and we freestyle over these beats, these shitty ass beats that were on tapes. You know what I mean? And we would try to try to rap and shit like that. And then one day we all sat down and fucking thought of a name and tried to write some rhymes and shit like that. And it lasted about a week and a half, two weeks for everybody. We'd get together and write some rhymes and try to rap them and shit. Everybody stopped kind of doing it, and fucking, I just kept trying <laughs> you know what i mean and i mean yeah by, by the time i was 12 i was 13 when i recorded my first professional studio song you know what i mean so i would say 12 years old man damn that's a long time bro <laughs> yeah and I, i'm 26 now you know what i mean yeah bro that's crazy dude been a lot of years man but it's a part man. of life it is who i am it's what i do you know what i mean i couldn't couldn't do you know what i mean i'm not gonna be a professional athlete or some shit like that man i like rapping you know what i mean it's what i do and when you when you first chose your your first hip-hop name the sadist uh what <laughs> influenced you to cho choose that for your first name anything any stories behind that yeah, actually, 
I, uh, I, I was given that name. I was, I was trying to, I, I, met a, I met this girl a long time ago, and she introduced me to a lot of Detroit wicked shit that I never heard of before, you know what I mean? I heard my first half-breed song because of her, you know what I mean? Some shit like that. Bedlam, all types of shit, you know? Yeah. And I was trying to think of names, and she had suggested a couple names for me and my boy. And that one just kind of stuck. Like, I just like the way it sounds. But eventually had to change it because it's copywritten somewhere and I didn't want to deal with that shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, uh, yeah. It's a foreign metal. Foreign name. A foreign metal band has that name, don't they, Sadis? I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't want to get caught in all I that would, copyright. I well, I was contacted by them about it at the time. I didn't, man, I was just making music with a name and shit. I didn't fucking, you know what I mean? I didn't have no no idea on the biz on what that could really mean. You know what I mean? And then I got the email and I was like, you know what? I think it, I think it's, man, I think I, I, think I should, uh, you know, not try to deal with that. Yeah, I wouldn't want to. I mean, it sucks, well, though. Trademarked everywhere. Yeah, I mean, that sucks. I mean, sometimes hip-hop artists can get away with it because, like, a hip-hop name is different than a band name, but, yeah, copyright shit. I mean, it sucks that uh, the Beastie Boys, they uh, just got sued for uh, uncleared samples for licensed sale on Paul's Boutique, like, 20, 25 years later, and they're just now getting sued for it. It's kind of messed up being that Adam Yow just died, and they're just now getting sued for it. So, I, I mean, I feel you, man. I'm gonna, I <laughs> I wouldn't want to get caught in all that copyright shit either. It's crazy, man. Yeah. Now, see, that's some bullshit. Suing the Beastie Boys. Like, you going to get the fuck out of here, man. Like, that shit, that shit was popping a long ass time ago, and you could have did something about it then. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I thought it was... Man, the people suing the Beastie Boys have more money than the Beastie Boys. Like, get the fuck out of here with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> So your your main focus behind your music as an artist, what's your main goal? My main goal? Yeah, as a hip hop artist for your music. My main goal is to have fun. <laughs> you <laughs> know what I'm saying? I, a lot of these guys, man, they you, man, this shit is you got to realize something here. You you you're one in a million. You're trying to hype up yourself to get some kind of record deal or some shit like that. You know what I mean? Like it's if you ain't having fun, then it's a job that ain't paying good enough to support these crazy dreams hip hop is giving you. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to have fun, and 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 as long as what you know what I mean. As long as I enjoy doing what I'm doing, I'm gonna do it. You know what I mean? Dude, that's the way to go. I like that attitude. I mean, most people are like, oh, I just want to get rich, and then they try to copy off other sounds. And I like I like your attitude, bro, 100%. You know, true underground right there. That's a true artist. Like, uh, I, come on, man. Let's be honest, man. Like, I'm not putting up numbers enough to own a big-ass crib and have a nice whip and shit like that. You know what I mean? I got kids to feed and shit. I'm not trying to chase a dream that I can just live without having to worry about that. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's fucking these dudes man gotta realize man you're taking it too serious and then you know how many other kids sound just like you and do exactly what you can say the same kind of things you say exactly you know I mean? yeah exactly and then uh, people start beefing with each other through the internet it's ridiculous uh, everybody should just get along <laughs> uh, so what you um Details on your very first show that you ever performed, and if you can remember, <laughs> any details on that one, or, or your craziest concert experience? Well, I can give you both, really, bro. Like, uh, I, th I thoroughly, thoroughly remember my first show I ever performed at, man. Um, I can't pinpoint the year. I know it was early 2000, and... <laughs> It was uh, it's called the Formation of the Cult, and it was it was thrown by a wicked shit artist. The first one I ever heard locally that was around before me, um, Anna Ballistic. I don't know if you've ever heard his music. 
Yeah, actually, uh, Crossworm showed me who Cannibalistic was on uh, Devil's Night. He was on Devil's Night 2010, I believe. That dude's crazy, but it's good shit. I I, I like it, man. <laughs> yeah. He he's he's the one that really put me in. You know what I mean? And uh, that show we did was at, on a street called Drulard Road in Windsor. It used to be Ford Road. It was the biggest fucking road, and you know, at the old times, making the most money and the life is now it's all crackheads and abandoned buildings and you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> that's wow up. yeah it is man we made it to a show man and, and uh, we had this huge ass banner we spray painted with the fucking logo of the show on it we made and and uh, you know we went all out man we had lights and shit like that and all types of crazy shit and we were just all a bunch of kids throwing a show and uh, it turned out good, man. I did a good set off of the first album, Mangled, that I ever did. And, uh, oh, man, it was a good time. I was probably, I <laughs> watched the tape a couple years ago and was, like, not real impressed with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, bring you back to the back in the day, some nostalgia stuff. <laughs> but, I'm, yeah, I'm just mad at, like, uh, man, you come a long fucking way from when you did that. You know what I mean? Yeah, dude. <laughs> it's been a lot of years since that, that first show. And uh, the craziest show I've ever done. Yeah. Uh, yeah, or the craziest. <laughs> Any, like, detail, man. Some crazy stuff. If you can. <laughs> um, well, I know in Arizona... When I was on the Shock Therapy Tour in Arizona, we did a show, and there was the stage was like only two feet high, and the club was small and real tight, and it was slam packed people, man, and uh, the, they had like little hatchet mans on the fucking stage, and and uh, during the last set when everybody came out and was on the stage, it was during uh, ABK song. Uh, all of a sudden, the next, you know, the whole fucking stage is swarmed with people, man. <laughs> the whole crowd is on the stage. The hat, one hatchet man got stolen, another one got broken. Damn, dude. Props <laughs> uh, were destroyed, fucking. It was live. Like, no anger. It was just wild. You know what I mean? Everybody was just. It was one of the craziest things I'd ever seen. You know what I mean? Damn, dude, that sounds pretty and crazy. I also, I, I mean, one of one of the craziest things I've ever seen as well was just playing, playing Hollow Wicked in Detroit. Oh, uh, I wanted to be there that year, but that's when I moved, man. I moved in 2008. I was there in 07, though. Right, right. I just, you know, we did that shit, bro, and it was fucking, that was a crazy show. Like, and back on that tour as well, man. Like, you Anything's crazy, you walk out and see that many people, you know what I mean? Yeah, I... I we weren't even allowed to see the crowd, bro. We saw the lineup from the fucking dressing room upstairs and fucking... We didn't get to see the actual crowd until we stepped out onto the stage. And it was fucking overwhelming for the first fucking minute. It was just like... It was wild, man. You know what I mean? Crazy shit like that. And oh. then I got a crazy shit we did here. I sold out the show... At a, at a place called the Players Club, and we went way over capacity. Like, they were selling tits to people even after we were over the fucking capacity. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, uh, fire hazard and shit. <laughs> yeah, the place, yeah, the place was shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder packed the whole way, and people, like, you know what I mean? Pool table and there, shit like that. The, the bar owner ran out of all kinds of different liquor and shit, like, you know? Beer, they were out of everything, bro. Yeah, uh, when I, I went, remember that. My, my boys fucking went nuts in the in the back. I fucking sound fucking shit the bed at one point. My boys went for outside and just fucking everybody was fucking drunk and just lost it and dudes <laughs> were fucking trash and shit and going all wild and shit in the back. Man, it was a rough night, but we sold out. Was, I don't even know. Think of that. That was a crazy night too, man. Yeah, when I went to Hollow Wicked, uh, there was a guy getting arrested in, like, 
everybody just sort of surrounded the police officer and were just like, let him go. Like, they all started chanting, let him go, and they let him go. Like, it was crazy seeing that shit. I was like, what the fuck? Where am I? You know what I mean? It was nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Weird, crazy shit happens in Hunter's Yeah. Yeah, man. So. I think also, man, like, uh, when, when Psycho became a Windsor, it was crazy. Somebody fucking threw something at Boondocks and fucking dudes dragged him out of the club. Seen another guy get his face fucking exploded onto, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it just happens, man, you know? Yeah, people go fucking ape shit for sure. So, when Psychopathic Records first contacted you about being part of Tunnel Runners, what was your first initial reaction when you found out? Uh, shit, I was just, I was just happy that somebody fucking heard, heard me, and, you know what I mean? Yeah. I noticed to it, you know? Because at the end of the set, this is all fun. It's always been fun. It's always been about having fun and doing what I love to do. It ain't about money making. I, don't, I ain't got the money to invest to make money happen. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to get signed. I'm just making music and people buy it, people support it, whatever. You know what I mean? Contacting me, it just got real. It was like, holy shit. Uh, I thought... Having fun has made, a, it made enough noise to become contacted for some opportunity as big as that was back then, man, it was fucking, it was nice, man. Oh, yeah, it debuted on, uh, it was in the top 25 hip-hop albums. I mean, I'd be pretty fucking happy. It's, you know, that's something to, you know, be proud yeah, about. Man, I mean, shit, I, I'll forever be grateful for that opportunity, you know what I mean? As long as, you know, what, what happened happened, you know what I mean? Like, they, they put out an album with me on it, you know, and, 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 you ain't got to do that for nobody. You know what I mean? Like, you, that's, that's a lot of money they put into that project, and that's their money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They could have put that into themselves. Uh, I was hoping they were going to release a second volume, but I guess it didn't make too much noise. I mean, it did make some good chart success, I would say, climbing up there, you know, but I just I was hoping for another one, you know. I thought it was pretty dope they put that out for everybody, all the unsigned artists. It was pretty cool. Yep. Yeah. Well, we had fun with it, too. Like, that's how the tour came about. That's how my first gap appearance came about. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, working with So Sick Social Club on In My Basement, how did that come together, and who came up with the concept? I mean, any story behind working with So Sick Social Club? It's funny because I'm listening to that album right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I'm about to. I'm about to spin that track for everybody here in a few minutes. <laughs> that shit is serious. Like uh, when when we did me and me and Social Club go back a long, long time, and I remember when these guys a long time ago sent me a, some music and shit, and and were talking to me and shit. You know, it was just the time for me. And I just, I always remembered their logo from what they sent me. It was an apple with a blade in it, but it was an x-ray. And that, that always stuck with me, man. And, and, and a couple years go by, and, and somehow we just crossed paths again, and these guys are fucking doing some pretty big business fucking. I, I think just from there, we did a bunch of shows. I brought them down Windsor to that show. I was telling you that sold out, man. That's the show that I brought them to. It came down and fucking we had a good time. Did uh, you know, did it big in Windsor and when they hit me up about doing the song it was it, it was obvious, yeah, I mean that's that's my dudes right there, so I'm gonna jump on that at any opportunity I get, you know, I'm gonna take and I just they sent me the track and they had this eighties fucking like you like you explained it, man, it felt like it could belong in the eighties slash of flip. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, when I wrote that review out, yeah, dude, like that's dude, that's exactly it's fucking crazy, dude. Like I I it's one of my favorite tracks off the album. It's very fucking catchy. And then when you jumped in it, I was like, damn man, like it actually sounds like he's actually doing this shit. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, well, I, that's the way it mess, right? Because, like, we all have different sounds and stuff, and we had to come together in a way that would complement each other's shit. So, like, I had those jumps in the, in, in my verse where, where they're going in my basement, and you know what I mean? And then I'm going on that every single time. It's, uh... I wanted I wanted it to have that kind of eerie feel to it, and uh, you know, it, it, it's a hype song, but at the same time, it could straight up be in a fucking horror movie '80s. Like it's very well produced. You know what I mean? It's a it's a real nice soundtrack, and I I fuck. It's an honor for me. You know what I mean? To jump on an album names like that to to even be considered. Hey, let's put Reno on that bitch with all this that we got on here. You know what I mean? That's, <coughs> yeah, you know, with fucking A-list underground shit right there. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, dude. That album, man, is definitely worth picking up, like, you know? I picked it up day one. I, well, when the pre-order came up, and fuck you, I, I, I had to do a review on it, man. I've been... <laughs> <laughs> it was just like I gotta get these guys' names out there more. And then when you jumped on that track, like, I didn't even know you were on it until like it started playing, dude. I was like, "Oh fuck, dude, it's awesome!" You know, you tore it up, man. Seriously. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna play that track, and then uh, we'll get you back online and answer some more questions. If that's cool. All right, bro. All right, I'm gonna put you on hold uh, for a little bit and get back on the line. So I'm going to play this song for everybody. This is So Sick Social Club. The song's called In My Basement off the album Dead Friends Don't Tell. And uh, Jay Reno's on that and he tears it up. So let's play that shit.
Uh, we are back. So, anyways, uh, you still there, bro? Yes, yeah. Uh, all right, cool, cool, cool. So, I'm gonna ask some questions about a few tracks, uh, stories and concepts behind certain tracks. Uh, your track Hoodlum, what influence for that track? I mean, it's a song about you know smashing up shit, you know breaking up stuff in the city. <laughs> you got any crazy stories behind that one? <laughs> when uh, yeah yeah, um, <laughs> when uh, when we were young, the neighbor we we were in, you know what I mean? When we were young, it was like when you're a kid and you're out running around being ridiculous. <laughs> get into some shit, you know what I mean? Uh, everybody can relate to that, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I broke a few things when I was a little kid, too, so... <laughs> I, mean, I mean, like, a, a lot of that shit, like, you know what I mean? That's just... Technically, just normal shit kids fucking get into when they're, when they're young, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> You know, we ran around and, and most of that shit on the hump, we did. You know what I mean? Just, just a bunch of little idiots being fucking, when I'm growing up, man, it's it's funny to think back. Like, I was, if that was me, I would have kicked my ass, you know what I mean? Yeah. Some kids, some punk kids did all that shit to me, man. I would have, I would have. I'd have kicked my own ass, you know what I'm saying? But when you're a kid, you don't think about shit. Like, we fucking did a bunch of dumb shit when we were kids. Did you actually, on the song, did you actually break up a toilet seat, or is that just for the lyrics? <laughs> Say that again? On the song, when you talk about breaking up the toilet seat in the middle of the road, did that actually happen, or was that just included in the lyrics? <laughs> <laughs> no, that happened. We, uh, we, were, we were going through this fucking... There's an area around here, it's all like forest and fucking <coughs> shit that and land and and uh, over a barbed wire fence there's a treatment plant for, for the water and shit and we were all rolling through these fucking woods when we were younger and we found this toilet, we, we found a whole toilet dug in the fucking forest. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> but like the three of us picked it up and we were like... <laughs> you know, and see if we could throw it over the fence in the road. And we threw it, and it fucking went over the fence, it just smashed all over the road, bro. And, and fucking, you know, you need some dude drove over it and shit. <laughs> it, was, it was fucking stupid, man. <laughs> Jackass shit. <laughs> And your uh, main inspiration for Blame Canada, that come directly from South Park or just discrimination towards Canada in general? Uh, doesn't come directly from South Park. I would say more so just, because you got to think about it, man. Like, uh, that's one thing I learned when I was on tour, man, is, is a lot of Americans don't really know anything about Canada at all. So, like, a lot of places I've been in the United States, even though I'm just a Canadian who lives tenths away from the States, I, I was I was treated like I was a complete foreigner, like I came from the other side of the world and shit, you know what I mean, by a lot of people. And, you know, when, oh, you're Canadian, then they say some shit. And it's, it's just like, oh, you say a, a belt funny or you say fucking A a lot or something, you know what I mean? Whether it's just something like that, <laughs> it just, I just had to make the fucking song, you know what I mean? I just, it just needed to be made. <laughs> I, I, that song's pretty dope, I must say. Especially you're probably talking about, you think my head flaps like a saw park character and you talk about using a chainsaw and that's how they would look like. Yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, it, well, that, that song's all fun. You know yeah, what I mean? it's a pretty dope song. I like it. it. But I want it. every stereotype I've ever heard. I, I had to put in the song, and, and they're more stereotyping than most would because we're a border city, and I, I've been in the states a lot. You know what I mean? So like, you, you're gonna hear it, you know. And to me, a lot of it's funny too, man. Like I laugh at some shit, but it just it needed to be put into a song, and I needed to have some fun with it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And your track everywhere. What inspired 
the main concept for that song for everywhere? Sitting around smoking and fucking watching the news. Yeah, pretty much saw uh, music been blamed for shit, right? It's, it's just all about uh, just music in general, you know what I mean? And how you get, when we when when you make a wicked or a horrorcore or a dark track, can you get looked at a different way? It's, it's it, it gets annoying when you when you turn on the TV and you're seeing your music in real life visuals. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. The, the news is fucking. The news is fucking evil. Watch the news, man. This shit is evil. They trying to brainwash you and they showing you nothing but death and fucking destruct, keep you in fear and shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's pretty fucked up. I mean, <laughs> that shit's more wicked than most wicked shit artists can even comprehend. Oh yeah, they'll replay the same thing over and over again, like bloodbath in high school, and they'll replay that over and over, you know. And I, I mean, the thing about the news is it's like a local TV channel. It's not like you need a cable TV to watch it. So a little kick in his channel on TV and bam, watch that shit, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And it's like, I don't, I, I don't, I don't deal with that shit. I watch the news to see the weather. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to, and I'm, I'm from Windsor, but I watch Detroit TV. So I get all Detroit's news. Yeah, I watch on the TV every time somebody get murdered in Detroit. <laughs> I know about it because I'm watching this damn show. Did you? you know I mean? Did you? Uh, uh, are you a fan of the Red Wings at all? I'm just curious since you live near Detroit. No, sir. <laughs> just wondering. Sir, you, a lot of people would think that, man. And where I'm from, it's a huge rivalry. It's just, for the most part, like me, man. I'm. I'm. I'm that's that's the Canadian part of me, man. I'm a I'm a Canadian, so I like hockey a lot, and I, I'm a fan of the Toronto Maple Leafs. And they gotta be like the worst team in the NHL, but I'm Canadian, so I like my team even if they suck. I just won't go pay a ticket <laughs> to watch the fucking game. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like your everybody's attitude, bro. Either, everybody's either a Wings fan or a Leafs fan on here, man. <laughs> I like your honesty too, man. And then your track Hellspawn was that directly from the Spawn comic books, or what influenced that track? I mean, what's yeah, it? kind of. It's just pieces like it, that. Like if you listen to that song, it doesn't have the best audio and shit like that. A lot of that album, we were just chilling in the studio, and like at this time, we had our own spot above a business, and we had this huge fucking studio, and it was the dopest shit ever. And we were always just chilling in there, and, and we and I made this album just out of something to do while we were hanging out. And that song, like, I, I, I'm a big fan of Spawn, you know what I mean? I got it tattooed on my arm, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's my favorite shit. I don't give a fuck about no Batman or Superman or none of that shit, you know what I mean? I like Spawn. That's my kind of comp. Yeah, when are they going to come out with the new Spawn movie? Fuck, man, everybody else is like, Avengers and uh, Batman, Spider-Man, I mean, we need Spawn, you know? <laughs> I think if they made a new they Spawn... Gotta finish, they got to fix that fucking original they made, man. <laughs> yeah, that they original. All, right, all the right shit to make that movie happen, all the characters were right, and then, except for the, the one dude being a white guy when he's a black guy, and he's in the movie he's white for some reason, you know what I'm saying? That was stupid, but... Like, with all the people lined up to make a dope movie, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, dude. It was just shit. I mean... It was shit. I want to see a rated R fucking Spawn movie, dog. Like, just a hard-ass movie where they go right by the HBO story and the comics and shit and just go out with it, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, Spawn's pretty fucking gory. I mean, it's got some pretty detailed violence up in there. I like it, man. I, I mean... I grew up on uh, Spider-Man and, you know, Batman stuff first, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, what is this? You know, just flipping through, and shit, I never looked back. <laughs> I wanted to get a giant, you know, they got, like, uh, big books of collections, you know, a collection of all the past comics. I want to get some of those, man, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I got, uh, I got the first, first issue of fucking Spawn comic. You know what I mean? Uh, damn, bro, keep that for life. I, I got the... I got, yeah, I got the first issue. My boy got one too, man. Like, this shit is, shit is dope, man. It's still mint. I ain't even fucking with it, you know? 
Fuck yeah, dude. Keep that for life. Did you ever read the Batman Spawn crossover? Yeah. Yeah, I, I checked those out. Yeah, it was pretty weird. It was, it was, it was all right. <laughs> I just like seeing Spawn in the comics, so I was, I was good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not so like that. The, the, uh, the other one was the Batman vs. Litter. And they made, like, a, a short movie on the internet. It was sick. That shit never came out. They never did nothing with it but a comic book. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping somebody gets a hold of Spawn soon. I mean, they, I mean, they keep recycling. With, I mean, there's already a new Spider-Man movie coming out. <laughs> I mean, it's only been, what, how many years? Like, three, four years, and we already got a new Spider-Man. Ugh. I know, and everybody's crazy about this movie, Doug, and I'm, I'm like, fuck the Avengers. Like, I, who's who's the coolest dude, Avengers? Uh, for me, uh, uh, like, the Hulk would be, but... <laughs> yeah, I would say the Hulk is the coolest bug out of all of them, too, but his movie sucked. Yeah, that movie did suck. <laughs> I'll be honest with that. <laughs> like, the only good Marvel movie was Iron Man, maybe, and the rest of them, I didn't even watch the Thor movie, to be honest. But <laughs> no, me neither. I watched the original Conan. <laughs> I don't want to watch Uh, yeah. And, uh, what are your favorite collab tracks you've ever worked on with anybody? If you have a favorite, or, you know, I mean, I know you did with uh, Bootleg of the Day, or Shoestring of the Day and Family. Yeah, you worked with the Dayton family and uh, on the brink. Uh, you got any favorites that you've ever worked on with other artists? A lot of favorite songs, man. That I've worked. I, 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 a lot of my collab joints with, with a lot of artists. Fucking, you know what I mean? And to me, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be a bigger name for it to be my favorite. Like I think one of my favorite collabs that I I've ever done have to be <coughs> I'm sorry but to be uh, one is, is in the basement was so sick because that song just put together so well you know what I mean and uh, I got a track called Blood Spiller with Gruesome and I fucking I can't get enough of that shit you know what I mean yeah I'm about to play that here in a few bro that song is well, uh, that that was like the best Halloween track last year. Honestly, I'm not even just saying that. I'm saying that like respect, dude. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, of the bigger collabs. Like, uh, right now, that's me, me and my boy Trilla and Bizarre. The song is called "Fuck," me, and it is it is ridiculous. Is you know what I mean, I love the fucking, I love the set. You know. I got a lot, man. I've done so many fucking collaborations in the past fucking so much, you know what I mean? Like, I'm on countless, countless albums, and, I, I, you know, I've done a lot of dope-ass songs with a lot of dope artists, you know? So, that's a hard one to answer, but... <laughs> it's all right, bro. Just curious. <laughs> uh... And then, uh, well, we're going to probably play that track of Gruesome, then we're going to wrap up the uh, show with Jay Reno. So, stay tight. Uh, we're going to play uh, Blood Spill off of Devil's Night 2010. Let the blood, blood spill, it's a thrill like none other Cut you up while you sleeping, bloody, bloody up the covers Your freshly furnished apartment is a target I'm hiding in your closet with a blade made for carving Bloody up your couch, to walls, to carpets The only way to clean a motherfucker is to torch it I believe in torture, you cannot afford it Not give me what I'm looking for, I promise more gorda Blood in the kitchen is dripping between the floorboards Underneath the doors, you're bleeding, I need more and more Watch Videos on how to slaughter a cow One swipe across your throat while you upside down And that's a slaughterhouse method You seem to do the trick When spilling blood is the goal and you're trying to do it quick I know I'll get caught, but fuck it, I can't stop It's sick, but I'm addicted to seeing it drip Try I'm the blood spiller The blood spiller I'm the blood spiller I want to spill your blood Blood spiller 
the blood spiller. Blood spiller. I want to spill your blood. Blood spiller. The blood spiller. Blood spiller. I want to spill your blood. Blood spiller. The blood spiller. Blood spiller. I want to spill your blood. Hey J Reno, guess what? I hate people. That's why I've ate people. Way lethal. I'll make your brain leave you, place you in the gray regals Trunk along with eight people, flopping like a maimed eagle Better get a mop in the bucket, the king of macabre is abducted You and your mama and cousin have a couple of problems I'm coming with a big chainsaw and it's buzzing And it's covered with lots of disgusting flesh and body parts And it's rusted, but it runs like a charm, it ain't busted No way, I'm here to bring your fears to life After this I bet you never leave the light or feel alright But that's implying that you get away I would put my money on you dying and your head decays Let us pray because you know it's gonna hurt before it's over Go berserk, cause once you open blood will squirt out While you're moaning, all this work isn't for nothing I'm making me a statue out of bone and flesh And I just love that fresh tattoo I'm Blood spiller, the blood spiller I'm Blood spiller, I want to spill your blood Blood spiller, the blood spiller I'm Blood spiller, I want to spill your blood Blood spiller, the blood spiller I'm Blood spiller, I want to spill your blood Blood spiller, the blood spiller, blood spiller, I want to spill your blood. 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 All right, back on the line with Jay Reno, the king of Canadian wick shit. So, what's your all-time top five favorite hip-hop albums of all time, if you can name top five, or the most influential on you as an artist? Top five? Hmm. I got, I got, a, lot, I got a lot of albums, man. Like, that's a... I don't know if I got... Okay, DMX, it's dark and hell is hot. Hell yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely one of my my favorite albums. Um, uh, I would say Tupac, Are You Still Down? I love that shit. I had that shit when I was young as fuck. <laughs> hmm. That's a hard question, man. <laughs> Oh, you can even name yeah. a horrorcore stuff if you want, bro. The horrorcore stuff. Yeah, or wicked shit. My favorite horrorcore album right now is the So Sick Social Club. If that friends don't tell. You know what I mean? That's my favorite horrorcore album right now. Um, obviously, The Lunatic is back. I'm a fan of my own shit or I wouldn't even make it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's a dope album. Um, I just I just got my hands on Groups of Natural Sicko. It just came out and that's a dope ass record. You know what I mean? Definitely. For sure. um, Twisted Most Tasteless uh -huh. I'll, I'll be able to listen to that forever. That's that's my exact kind of shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, that 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 will stand the test of time for underground for sure. Agree with that 100. percent That was a great album. Like you can just listen to that shit no matter what. It's a fucking uh, it's a good record, man. I know it's hard. It's hard to pick, man. I got I got so many, man. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Uh, so, if you were in a zombie apocalypse, what would your main choice weapon be, bro? Um, it, that all depends, Doug, because I've watched a ton of zombie movies, you know what I mean? What kind of zombies are you dealing with? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, let's see, Night of the Living. Maybe Night of the Living Dead. The slow ass ones. You know? True, so true. I'm fucking with the ones that run really fast. You're fucked anyway, so it doesn't really matter what weapon you got. But I'd probably, for that one, 
probably want an AK-47. So you can take out as many as possible. <laughs> and if they were the slow-ass zombies, <coughs> the slow ones that I, hmm, then have some fun. You know what I mean? For sure, for sure. I'd, I'd probably, I'd probably go with the chainsaw with this, with the slow ass zombies. But I'd have a pistol too, just in case. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I think. I mean, the really slow ones. I mean, not love them dead. You could pretty much hit them with anything. You know, as long as you decapitate them. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean, and that's cool, man, because you can have fun with that. But you know, the ones from the. <coughs> Or the ones from Land of the Dead, the ones that learn shit, start picking up weapons, imagine that shit. Fuck, well, dude, that'd and be... what's your weapon to try? <laughs> <laughs> that'd be all Resident Evil 5 shit, you know? <laughs> uh. So, can you give any fans who want to become hip-hop artists any, you know, advice on starting out or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. Have fun and don't fucking take yourself too seriously. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because yeah, you enjoy it, not because you want to think that you saw on the fucking music video channel. You know what I'm saying? Because you're never going to be the guy. You know? Have fun, make music, earn a fan base, keep them happy. And you know what I mean? Do what you love to do. Don't fucking... In the game and trying to be like everybody else that's trying to just make make a name off of dancing and dress stupid. You know what I'm saying? For sure, to be be <laughs> yourself. And if you're hardcore, think it's been real good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because uh, keep it fresh. It's easy to it's easy to blend in with all the guys that do all the same shit. You know what I'm saying? And what is the future, Jan Rito? And what can fans expect on your new record you're working on? Any details behind any of that? Yeah, yeah, I can, I, I can, I can do details. But uh, I'm working on, I'm working on two. I'm gonna release two at the same time. One, one of them, I'm I already got all the beats for, and I'm working on right now, and. It's gonna be. I, I want. I wanted to, to experiment and and do like a monster. I'm not sure if it's gonna be like a two disc thing. You know what I mean, or what? But it's 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 called instrument therapy, and the first disc is the patience, and it's all the collaborations. <coughs> and the second disc is. I haven't thought of a title yet, but it's gonna be all solo songs. Fuck yeah! You know what I'm I think it should be a double album, one with collabs and one with non. I mean, either way, I'm glad you're making new music. I'm glad you're still tearing it up after all these years. You know, it's pretty cool that you. I just, I, this, I'm just gonna make something for everybody, man. You know what I mean? You like hearing me rocking with some some dope buddies. We're gonna do that. But then there's people that like to hear me and want to hear me, we're going to do that. You know what I mean? But when I release it, I want it to be monumental. I want it to be huge. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to... It's, it's got to be dope. It's got to be a full-on thing. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Uh, is I'm, there... I'm, I've been writing my ass off while down guests and fucking doing a bunch of shit just to make a dope-ass double release. You know what I mean? Fuck yeah. Which is something I've never done before is drop two albums at once, and I'm, I'm just kind of challenging myself to do it. So, and I'm not I'm not the kind of person that will let somebody down. You know what I mean? If I, if it's within my control, it ain't gonna happen. Uh, do you plan on doing a, a nationwide tour for that? Uh, or can you anything for that? You know, that's that's all that's all in the future, you know what I mean? That's a long ways away. You know, for sure, we're just in the for writing sure. process and getting the beats right now. And uh like uh, the the new Academy mix C D is ready to go. You know what I'm saying? It's just getting mixed out right now. And uh, you know, we took a lot of time on that, but 
now that that's wrapped up and it's going to come out, we're going to promote it and do some shit. And I'm going to start grinding into this album. You know what I mean? And uh, can't give no release to any ideas like that, but it will be dope. I promise you that much. I'll be supporting it 100%, bro. You know, if you need me to do any reviews, hit me up, and I'll let you know what I can do for well, it. definitely, man. I mean, definitely, man. I plan on going back to college for journalism. I'm just uh, freestyling right now, so. <laughs> uh, David Talley owns the Ethan Spot. Uh, he he just contacted me. I did a review for Crossworm out in Grand Rapids. Uh, you Crossworm. Know. Crossworm's from Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, he resides in Grand Rapids now, but uh, he hit me up to do a review for his uh, Jaws album, Jaws EP, and, like, David Talley liked it so much. like, hey, man, do you want to do this full-time for a website? And I was like, I'll, I won't do it full-time, but I'll, you know, I'll do what I can do, and that's where it all started, man, because <laughs> of Crossworm, bro. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's, good. it's good, man, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. And any last words before we close out tonight's program, Jay Reno? <laughs> uh, yeah, bro. I uh, just want to shout out all, all the lunatics, everybody who supports my shit. Um, you know, shout out Academy. Um, shit, shout to the top. Check out uh, bandcamp.com slash top, T-O-P-P, and buy his new record. That joint with me, Trilla, and Bizarre called Fuck You. Yeah, it's and Bizarre of D12. Shit on it. Yep, that's some hard shit. Um, you know what I mean? Shout out to uh, So Sick Social Club. You know? Um, everybody, man. You know, I don't know too many motherfuckers, so. And, uh, you know, shout outs to the F Spot for holding it down for that review. And, uh, Shout outs to you, homeboy, for having me on the show, man. Yeah, it's an honor, man. I've, I've been, as I said, Hellspawn. I, it was on some compilation. <laughs> <laughs> that was forever ago. I was like, dude, I like the wordplay and the storytelling. It was dope, dude. And I'm glad, I'm glad you're still in the, uh, in the game after all these years. I'm glad you haven't quit yet. Keep pushing, man. You're still young, bro. You're still young. You got a lot left in you. Hell yeah. Shit only, shit's only getting better and always gotten better, you know what I mean? And you learn a lot along the way. And uh, basically, put, man, we still having fun, so we still doing it, you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Well, you have a good night, bro. Take care. Uh, you know, keep putting out music, and you know, I'm hoping everybody keeps supporting. I know I'm going to keep supporting, so... Hell yeah, man, for sure, man. Thanks for having me on, everybody. Uh, you know, Saturday night, you should be high or something right now, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Oh, oh hey, Coke. Quick question really quick. Do you think you're going to, can you, uh, I mean, Devil's Night 2012, that's could be the last Devil's Night, and I was wondering if, uh, if possible, if you'd like to include an exclusive on that. That was my 2012. Yeah, for Halloween, man. This Halloween, whenever, if if you can, if possible. <laughs> I got you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, bro. Definitely, bro. Uh, All right, man. Well, have a good night. Shit, I'm gonna get up out of here. I'm gonna play some Call of Duty and uh, you know, smoke some. So. Yeah, what's your gamer tag in Call of Duty so people can add you, man? Lunatic Reno, Xbox 360. All right, dope. Anyways, this is Jay Reno, king of Canadian wicked shit. He's been in the game for a while, and I appreciate you being on the show, homeboy. It's cool. No doubt, man. Peace. Later.